So I just just quickly kick off what this what this is about, what the meeting is about, and um, the mayor is here to give to give a presentation to kind of kick things off for us, which is great. Um, it's, we haven't had that kind of attention in other ports, and so we really appreciate uh, we really appreciate you showing up. Um, and uh, once that's over, we can do a quick round of, of uh, introductions, and you probably have to scoot, and uh, we can have more of a conversation after that. Um, my name again is Jonathan Labry. I work at the Gulf of Maine Research Institute. We're based uh, down in Portland, Maine. And we've been contracted by the New England Fishery Management Council to run this series of public meetings, stakeholder engagement meetings, uh, in connection with the, the review that they're doing of the sector system. Uh, NOAA policy mandates that the councils do a, do a review of any catch share system that they've put into place uh, after five or six years. And they're doing a technical review. They've got uh, folks from the Science Center and from the, uh, the regional office and others doing more technical analysis of the impact of the sector system during its first five years, so fishing year 2010, or six years, I should say, first fishing year 2010 to fishing year 2015. Um, what, what we are doing is going around and, and getting more kind of quantitative, I mean qualitative input from, from the industry, from the public, on what the impact of the, of the system has been. And we're not limiting it to just those first uh, six years. Anything that you know, people want to say and bring forward, uh, we're really eager to hear. Um, and uh, just as a, as a quick reminder, this is, this is really just to get broad input on the sector system as a whole. We're not here to get input on like Amendment 23 or anything. This is not a formal council meeting or a committee or anything like that. Um, we are, apart from, far, far from some uh, camera rolling here, at the beginning of the meeting for the mayor's presentation, we're not recording. Uh, we're not taking verbatim notes, so this is really designed to just get a conversation going. If you do want to have your comments submitted specifically to the council, uh, you can submit uh, written comments to Tom Neese. That information is on the website and also on the cards that we have around the table here. Um, so we're, this is really designed just to get ideas out there and hear feedback. Uh, we're compiling all this. We'll have a re written report to the council and make a presentation. Uh, to the council at some point. We were originally planning for that to be September, but the work on Amendment, Amendment 23, I think, is going to push that back to another date, although we'll do an update. Um, so with that, I'll uh, hand it over to the mayor, and um, again, really appreciate your being here. Yeah, no, thank you, Jonathan. Thanks, Heather, for, uh, for having us. Um, um, so a, a couple things, and, and um, yeah, I, I appreciate the opportunity to uh, speak up about um, the catch share system because it's been uh, we've had um, it is has almost been a decade's worth of experience now um, and um, you know there's a lot to be said about it and there's some um, some data out there that uh, that uh, I think will inform the discussion I think, you know, the bigger story is just uh, is really the, the gaps in the data um, and what that implies for um, whether the system is, is actually allowing um, fishermen to catch um, you know, their quota consistent with um, the imperatives of, of Magnus and Stevens. So I think that's sort of the punchline of my, my presentation. That, um, there are a handful of things I want to say. I could tick through the slides pretty quickly. I think everybody has. If you don't have a copy of the slide deck, I know Pamela's going to leave some behind, um, but I'll, I'll go through it and they're right at the door. Um, I, I do want to make, I do want to make a point, um, and this may sound, uh, this may sound um, ingracious, but um, it, it is to state the obvious, it is, it is highly unlikely that you're going to get a big turnout uh, at 4.30 on Friday afternoon in the middle of a beautiful August day. It just, you know, so there are, you know, what, 15 of us uh, here, uh, many of us who are here in official roles. Um, it's, um, it, there is one of the things, and I think this is, this, you know, sort of bears, um, this isn't the pick on you guys per se, but, um, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a broader point here that I do want to emphasize right up front. Um, you know, New Bedford, as a fishing port, not just as a ground fish port, but as a fishing port, when you add in the landings over on the Fairhaven side as well, 
lands about 70% of the Massachusetts catch, about 35% of New England, 33% of New England, about 8% of the entire country. And yet in the Northeast, we have about 2% of the NOAA employees. Um, it's, there's, there's a physical gulf uh, and, and council employees together. Uh, there is a physical gulf between the regulated community uh, and the regulators that impedes, uh, I, I have submitted time and again over the years, that impedes uh, a real deliberate discussion about, uh, about policy, about data consideration, about trying new things, about experimentation, innovation. Um, you know, when the Science Center's in Woods Hole and Garfo's in Gloucester and uh, the council is in Gloucester as well, um, you know, places that don't, you know, in the case of what's hold, does absolutely no fishing. In the case of Gloucester, does one eighth of the fishing that we do here uh, and doesn't nearly have the processing base where we have here. You're bound not to come up, uh, arrive at, at um, thoughtful policy outcomes. And um, uh, just because the people aren't interacting with one another and every effort to try to bring people together, not, nevertheless, has, just hasn't been workable. So, you know, it's another pitch for me, and it picks up on this point about doing meetings at 4.30 on Friday. Um, there is, if you want better uh, fishing policy, if you want better regulations, put people in the same room uh, and make it easy for them. And I mean that both physically here today, I mean it metaphorically in terms of the location of, of, um, of, of, of uh, government agencies that have some say over, uh, over regulation. Uh, so as for, for ground fish, I, I think that the touchstone for me remains, I think for a lot of us here, uh, is um, you know, the uh, assessment of the um, catch share system of, of, and its, its implementation and its impact uh, on the Port of New Bedford um, in 2014. The lead author was Dan Georgiano. Steve, were you, were you one of the authors on, on that report? Yeah, so Steve can give you. Yeah, so thanks for, for uh, so if I get it wrong, and, and if I misrepresent any finding in that report, I will be promptly corrected, and I, and I won't steal their thunder either. But you know, that, that report uh, poses the question that I uh, posed the question back then that I think is at the center of, of any discussion, should be at the center of any discussion of catch shares, and remains so today, and that is, you know, why is it that we're not catching all the quota, right? I mean, look at it right now. This, and I'll go through this fast because this audience, I mean, if we have a cable TV audience that I, I, I might, for those of you who here, humor me, I will just give people a little bit of background, but um, the annual catch limits of the, the amount of metric tons uh, measured in metric tons are listed uh, here for, uh, for the ground fish sector. And, um, and so that's a, that's, um, you know, a function of a, a number of things, but uh, it's a determination of the fish that are out there, less uh, a buffer just to make sure we're not catching too many. And then we had arrive at, at the ACL, the annual catch limit. The, um, so you would think that fishermen who are, you know, know where the fish are and uh, who are motivated like other business people by a, uh, a profit motive would be uh, would be catching right up to, to that limit, right? So logically, you think that was, that's the case, uh, and, but that hasn't been the case really since the implementation of the, of the catch share system. About a third of the quota was caught back in 2012 by the year of the study, 36%. And now in this past uh, year, the latest year for which there's data available, you know, just under 19%. So like a fifth of what's allowed is actually caught, a little bit less. So the question is, well, so there's something wrong with that because Magnuson Stevens, after all, isn't just about uh, it, uh, about uh, the conservation of um, particular species of fish or all of them all together. It is about that, but it's also about sustaining uh, fishing communities too. Um, National Standard Eight um, it says, in effect, that you know that regulations that the, the the goal of the law is to ensure, among other things, that fishermen are able to continue to fish. So, um, a quota. So, when only 20, roughly 20% 20 of the quota is caught, one has to question whether that imperative in Magnuson Stevens is actually being discharged. So, I, I say all this, and I'm, I'm preaching. I'm 
uh, nobody here needs to needs that 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 primer. I'm, I'm saying this just for the TV audience, just to um, weigh the context. So so why is it? That, that's the that to me is the central question. So you know, so in particular, there's the Haddock, um, you know, landings in the Haddock quarter. Haddock, is, as we know, uh, you know, for those who are watching, is a is a traditional New England brown fish that is more plentiful than than others, like uh, certain of the flounder and cod species. Um, so, um, you know, we're not catching all of it, even though it's not considered to be a choke species, right? One that's limited and that might choke off the ability to catch others. So, um, let me just go to the next one. So, so why is this happening? So, is it a, is it a question of, you know, the the biomass being um, being overestimated? Is it a matter of uh, the choke the number of uh, the biomass of the choke species being underestimated? Is it uh, something wrong with the stock uh, assessments? Does it have something to do with uh, the leasing market? I mean, all these things. We never we don't have a definitive answer for that. And I uh, I think the punchline to this presentation again is this needs to get figured out, and it can only get figured out um, with you know more study, more frequent stock assessments, you know, closer study. Um, you know, there may be um, it, we're, we're not going to talk about Amendment 23, but we have to get that right in a way that doesn't impose undue costs on fishermen, but at least but it does allow us to get better data. So that's part of the mix uh, as well. So we're just going to. The next one. Um, so anyway, this just lists some of the. Um, this, 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 these are the implications in effect, right? So everything, everything has a cost. Um, if you're not able to predict um, how much quota you're going to be able to catch, it impedes, uh, it chills business planning, and for any small business, that 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 creates distortions, right? So, you know, how much you know, how much you can borrow. How much you can, how many employees to hire, uh, et cetera, and as and as folks get discouraged about being in the industry, um, you know they, they they vote with their feet, they leave. Here we go to the next one. Um, yeah, so this just this just affects the uh, you know, the effects on 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 businesses, you know, financing and and, uh, and business planning and, um, improvements. I mean, and you see it in the uh, the draggers. I mean, the draggers in, as, as a class of vessels on the on our waterfront, um, you know, haven't seen uh, the level of, of investment that would make them sustainable in the long run. A lot of them are just, I mean, physically, a lot of them are, are physically deteriorated. It's it's noticeable even though, you know, to a lay person like me. I mean, obviously, sometimes they're, you know, juxtaposed with a scalloper where, you know, it's, whose owner is more liquid and can put uh, can reinvest uh, back into to their boat, and so it's it's you know it's a somewhat of a, perhaps an unfair comparison, but nevertheless we haven't seen the reinvestment uh, in the dragger fleet um, as in the last ten years that we had seen uh, historically. So when we go to the the next one, um, so anyway we talked about we've done some you know the NOAA roundtables have been helpful. I, I to my earlier point I think they're of um, there are limits to their utility. Uh, again, because we are far removed from the folks who are making the regulatory decisions, who are making policy, um, we don't have the kind of level of constant interaction that I think was, is necessary to, to refine regulations in a way and processes in a way that will allow, um, allow you know, a, a more sustainable catch. Um, so anyway, and then the other the other point is, and this is something that everybody I think you know, agrees on in theory, which is you know there should be more uh, you know, cooperative science, uh, more more cooperative uh, research. It does. I mean, it is. I think it's uh, you know it's essential in, in the sense that we have, um, you know, we have opportunities to to uh, I don't know, willingness on the waterfront to do more of it. Uh, it does cost money, uh, but I think it's money. Uh, well spent, and I think there are ways of, of of doing cooperative research that aren't necessarily all that expensive, and they really need to be fully explored. Um, there's one other thing I was going to mention on uh, on this, but when we go to the go to the next slide, and then again, I, I alluded to Amendment 23. You know, this is uh, you know again, you know, you have a a um, 
a, a component of the, the fishing industry, namely the ground fish industry, that is not that liquid right now, that is you know, constrained by all the things that we just mentioned. There are folks who are leaving the business. Um, you know, there's uncertainty in certain sectors, obviously. You know, uh, sector 789 have seen you know, some um, uh, turmoil in the last uh, few years. Uh, and so, you know, one open question is, it, it, it's, I would just again submit to everybody that, um, you know, monitoring, changes to monitoring requirements, whether it's coverage or whether it's uh, particularly increases in coverage, but also um, even electronic uh, monitoring um, might be a little too much to take on right now. I mean, in an ideal world, everything, we'd have perfect information about what's being caught, what's being discarded. Um, it's, it, this, we, I think we have to tread carefully here. It's, I think that's all I'll say on the matter because I know we're not focusing on Amendment 23 per se, but it is part of the, the mix. We want more information. We don't want to do it at, at, at great cost to, um, you know, to members in the industry. So um, I, think that's the, I think that's the last slide I had. Yeah, so that's, yeah, so that's it. So that, I just wanted, again, I, I wanted to be brief, recognizing it's 4.30 on Friday. Right, um, August again. Uh, and I appreciate your attention, but I, I do think you know these issues. Just to sum up, these issues around process, and frankly, this, uh, one of the things that's frustrated me, as you can tell, for a long time, is the, the, the remove from folks who are making the decisions, the physical remove, um, yeah, and and these issues that we've gone through, which again go go right back to their report from the, from 2014. I'm glad you guys. I, I'm glad you guys are here because I think you can put a far finer point on it. But I want you to know that, you know, this is something that everybody who has anything to do with the ground fish industry uh, in New Bedford is paying uh, close attention to. So, Oops. so, Jonathan, thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thanks for the assist with the yeah. uh, the mouse. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.